Hey everyone! Last weekend, I went from San Francisco all the way to Basel, Switzerland to watch the Badminton World Championships. It was an amazing experience, and words can't quite describe how much fun it was to be there, and how inspirational it was to see players play in person when I've only seen them play on YouTube beforehand. It was really exciting, and the energy of the audience was incredible, so I'd highly recommend you go watch a professional badminton game if you ever get the chance. Aside from watching for fun, I'm also always looking for key insights that can help me see badminton in a new way, and notice things that could potentially help me improve. So today, I want to talk about the top 3 things I learned as I watched men's singles from the live audience. Also, if you enjoy content like this, make sure you sign up for my email list to get video scripts, video updates, and exciting announcements that I'll be making in the future. If you're already on the list, you should already have an idea of what I'm going to talk about in this video. Anyway, let's get started. The first thing I noticed was that the players get to the shot really early. They then pause and wait for only about half a second before hitting. Check it out in this recording. By getting to the shot early and pausing a bit before hitting, the players are trying to disrupt their opponent's rhythm, slowing the game down for a brief second and then speeding it right back up. If you're up for it, try out this challenge. They also do this when hitting shots from the back. Notice how they sort of hang in the air for a split second before hitting the shot. Complementary to that, I also notice that players don't move until the other player actually hit. I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's hard to put to practice, especially when your opponent pauses before hitting, so you don't know exactly when to move again. When the players get tricked and move before they hit, they get off balance and have to scramble to get the shot back. How many times do they have to get faked before learning to stay perfectly still until their opponent hits the shot? My third takeaway is that the players had amazing footwork. It's not the first time I've noticed this, but professional players seem to glide on court. They look like they're running on clouds. Their footwork is super smooth and so efficient that you can't hear them even when they're running super fast from one corner to the other. Notice how the squeaking of their shoes is louder than the sound of their running. Hopefully, one day, my fork will look just as smooth as theirs. I'm definitely going to keep these takeaways in mind as I think about the things I need to improve on, and if you watch professional games in the future, you might start noticing the same things as well. Aside from that, there were some things I also noticed on a broader level. First, at the world stage, rallies aren't usually finished in one shot. Even if they manage to trick their opponent and catch them off guard, the opponent is fast enough to get back in balance and rush to the shot, and still hit back a pretty decent safe shot. At their level, they're constantly feeling out their opponent and trying to create holes in their opponent's game. They play a lot of neutral shots until their opponent hits a weak return. They then inject some pace and try to finish a rally. Second, I notice that clears are a big part of the game. They aren't afraid to hit a clear and be forced to run to their next shot, and they also trust in their defense. I found it really fascinating that professional players are able to hit a clear and so comfortably retrieve the next shot, whether it be a drop, half smash, smash, or clear. There are literally so many options their opponents can hit back, but the good players can retrieve all of them. Third, I feel like a lot of the things that are going on are happening behind the scenes. It's hard to say what goes on in the players' minds, what strategies they're trying to use, and why they get inconsistent. Is it actually because they're just having a bad day and hitting everything out and into the net? Or is it because their opponent is forcing them to be inconsistent? Or they feel pressure to hit more risky shots because that's their only chance of winning? 
At the World Championships, I was definitely wondering why Anders made so many mistakes in the final against Momoda. Finally, I just want to point out how much different the experience is when you watch a professional bounty game in person. This is something that deserves a whole separate video of its own, so I'll just keep it short here. The three biggest advantages of watching a badminton match in person is the angle, the spatial awareness, and the uninterrupted viewing experience. Compared to games you find on the official badminton YouTube channel, where the camera angle is at a high bird's eye view, watching from a lower and closer position gives you a much better feel of how fast the shell is and how fast the players are moving. Just compare these two versions of the same rally. Did you notice the difference? The next key part is the 3D spatial awareness. No matter what the camera angle is, what you see on the screen is only a 2D projection of what's happening in 3D. Information is definitely lost in translation, especially the depth. I'm not exactly sure what the science is, but the brain probably processes a video versus the same thing happening in real life very differently, right? Even with the video that I took, since I sat close to the center of the court, it's hard to see from the video that Kento Momota was moving up with great speed. But if you look at another video from a wider angle, you can actually tell how fast he was rushing up. And finally, watching from the audience, we have an uninterrupted viewing experience. In fact, we choose our own viewing experience. We can follow the bird, we can keep focusing on a certain player, or we can even just stare at the umpire the entire time. Hope that's not you. On the flip side, a match you watch on YouTube will most likely be edited so that you switch from many different camera angles. Although that's great for TV, it breaks the tension of the match and takes the control out of the viewer's hands. Obviously, there are still many advantages of watching the YouTube version, but I'll leave that for another video. Want to know when that video is coming out? Or want the video script for that video? Then sign up for my email list. I'll leave the link below. And that's it! Thanks as always for watching! These are just some random thoughts I had when I was at the World Championships, and I try to compile them in a way that makes sense. I hope you learned something as well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, let me know what you guys think of the video, and if you want to hear about how my experience was in general, like what the city was like, how the food was, or even my awkward encounter with some of the Chinese team on the tram. Ah, <sighs> kill me now. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.